Hey, how's it going guys? Today's episode we're going to be talking about the massive controversy that there is of GTA The Trilogy The Definitive Edition. Now, with there being The Trilogy The Definitive Edition, I don't think Definitive Edition is probably the right word to be using. Uh, so, obviously as a lot of people have seen since the game has come out, I wanted to give it a few days to kind of have my own time to play and review it in my own head to kind of accumulate what I'm actually going to say about this game. So if you didn't know, GTA Trilogy is now flooded with like people asking for refunds with the game itself and how bad it's been handled, blah de blah. A lot of people are under the impression that the game itself is really, really bad. So there's a picture of the original Definitive in, you know, a modded edition of the game where like, you know, fetched expressions and stuff look really real. So the thing that I uh, have been noticing a lot recently is that a lot of these people that are having these issues are people from PC and people who actually haven't played the game. A lot of it's like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't pay 60 quid to, you know, play this game. And, you know, oh, I knew this game was going to be a flop and blah, blah, blah. In my personal opinion, from what I've played of the game, I've only ever come across one big game breaking glitch. So, if you guys have actually played the Definitive Edition or played the originals, there's a mission called Checkpoint Charlie after you buy the boat docks. That's the only time I've ever had an issue where we have actually had to try and find a fix for the game. So, if you play it in Fidelity mode instead of Performance mode, basically the game runs at such a low frame rate that it can't finish the mission, it will crash every time. Midway through the mission, you have to change the actual graphical settings in order to do it. And you can't do it at any point or when you start. You have to save at the boatyard. And after that, after you do three jumps of Checkpoint Charlie and you go to the main bridge, that's when you change the graphical settings from fidelity to performance mode. And that is really bad. The fact that that exists, that's something that I personally experienced whilst playing the game. All these other issues and bugs though that people seem to be talking about, I haven't actually witnessed or noticed in my period of time playing the game. Now for a game like this, I think a lot of people have gone in this with a lot of uh, with a lot of hate, you know, like, oh, if it's not the original, or, you know, you're making a remake of the original, it wants to be better than what the originals were. Uh, granted, I don't think that, like, what they done and how they did it is probably the right way of doing it, especially with the AI machine learning on how to, you know, type things out and help them develop what the game is and what we see for, you know, ourselves as we play the game. In my personal opinion, though, I don't feel like that I've wasted my 60, uh, sorry, my 55 pounds or 60 dollars in this case for you Americans. And the only reason why I say that is simply because, well, unfortunately, in this day and age that we are in, every year that any Call of Duty game comes out, if there's an issue, guess what? There's a patch, there's a fix, there's an update. There's The game is never fully finished anymore. Like I said before, and, and if any of you tuned into the live stream, the only game I ever played that was perfect from day one with no issues was when I actually played God of War 2018 on the PlayStation 4. That's the only game I've played recently where there hasn't been, you know, like, you know, game breaking glitches and bugs and it needs like 70,000 different updates. Like people are comparing the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition to Cyberpunk 2077. In my personal opinion, I do think that's a bit of a slap in the face. It's, it's playable. You can start the game, it's playable, the missions aren't broken. You can literally play it from day one and it will work. It's definitely not cyberpunk level, but I can understand and see why people are so upset and pissed to the fact that, you know, they spent all this money, hard earned money, and for a game that's not fully, you know, finished yet, a game that is still needs some work, but the good prospect is that I can see of this issue is what they should probably do and what I would do if I was one of those, you know, developers. Cut the price slightly and then turn around and say, right, you know, we have a roadmap, so the first update is going to fix, you know, X, Y, and Z. And, you know, something, something like give people something back. Because what we have here isn't actually a bad, like, rendition or a bad game it works it does what it was supposed to do the lighting system and stuff it, it all does what it was meant to do but at the end of the day pc definitely shouldn't have had to have waited you know three days uh, longer than everybody else just to be able to play the trilogy i do think that is really out of order and the fact that they weren't giving out refunds automatically is a bit like you know 
you know, these people paid for a game and you've made them wait an extra three days for a game that is, was meant to be finished and then making people wait for the issues that they caused themselves by, you know, not polishing the game or giving it a quick once over to make sure everything worked how it was supposed to work. But I digress. I mean, I'd like to know what you guys think in the comment sections. Um, I would, it's really interesting to me because this subject is very hit and miss. There were a lot of people that I've read in comment sections and what other people said were like, you know, if you play the game for what it was meant to be, like, you know, I played the originals. So playing this is amazing. It's a it's hundred times better than what the original one could look like and could play like, you know. Uh, if you put it in performance mode, I mean, it hits quite an easy 60. Uh, fidelity, it definitely has that jittery, like, lagging effect. But if I'm honest with you, after playing the originals on, like, the newer consoles and stuff, I'm quite used to the jitteriness. So, you know, there's something about it where it's like, yeah, you know, I remember this game when it used to lag. But I can also see the two sides of the coin where some people are like, you know, it shouldn't be lagging. It's a PlayStation 5, there should be no issues. Which, you know, if you wanted to have it on a higher graphical setting, it should be a cap at 4K60. Or, you know, with the graphical setting being set for performance, it should be consistently smooth all the way through. That's basically the bottom line here, but it'll be interesting to see what you guys have to say about it. Uh, please give us a like, rating, comment, and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you very much, my guys, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, boys. Peace out.